Hello guys, in this video, I'll try to answer the most asked Rust related question on my channel, which is choosing the right Rust web framework when building your backend application. First of all, I thought to perform the benchmark test and share the results with you guys. But those results would be very limited to the use case, my machine, or any cloud instance that I'm using. But to get a better idea, we need use case like which are more close to our production application. You know, something like serialization, deserialization, we do query DB multiple times, we do DB updates, and we also cache the data. Unlike I just spin up a HTTP server that returns hello world and I do benchmark and share with you guys, which is useless. Because as we speak, there are 25 plus common to moderately known web frameworks in Rust. And probably by the time I launch this video, in a week or so, you guys will find out, hey, there is an other framework popping around in the Rust community as the, you know, lightning fast, thundering speed of uh, framework that we guys, we can use. So the idea here is to equip you guys that even if there is something coming in the future that is as good as or even better than the current frameworks, you can still rely on the resources shared in this video. So without further ado, let's dive into it and review some benchmarks which you can use literally for any language or framework and then I'll present a simple decision diagram or flowchart which I have designed as a rule of thumb from my own experience working with different commonly available Rust frameworks. First of all, I'll be using this Tech Empower Web Framework Benchmarks to review some numbers. This is super reliable and you can literally use it for any language or framework. Personally, I've been using it like since I would say uh, around 21 or 20 and uh, this has been helping me decide which framework I should be using for production application. Now, they perform the rounds literally around every six months to one year. As you can see, the latest being around 23, which is 24th of February this year. And you can also review the environment. Uh, as you can see, around 23rd onwards, they are using an Azure environment. You can also check the physical hardware requirements and all other stuff to, you know, just compare uh, the environments. You can also find source code available on their GitHub for each of the tasks that they perform. So let's go to round 23. One of the things I admire is they don't just do a hello world comparison. Instead, as you can see, JSON serialization, single query, multi query, cached queries, fortunes, data updates, plain text. Basically, they perform in different scenarios which are more closer to our production grade application. And here you can also, you know, filter by classification, by languages, as you can see, different other languages, platforms, uh, frameworks. So basically everything that you have. And let's say disable all and we just select uh, Rust. And let everything as it is. Let's apply the changes. So here we go. We have the comparison and let's review some numbers. So right here, as you can see, the JSON serialization and the test, as we can see, sends a request and returns a message. And in this test, each response is a JSON serialization of freshly instantiated object that maps the key message to the value hello world. And as you can see, these are different frameworks used and we can check the data table in terms of, you know, uh, responses per second. We can check uh, the latency as well, as you guys can see here. And frameworks overhead, uh, like instead of just your own stuff, how much there is a framework overhead. And as you can see, Exim has the most. Similarly, we can also use for single query. And again, as you can see, it says fetching a single row from a simple DB. So we have all this performance test here. Now, most of you guys would be like, hey, I have only heard about, let's say, Rocket or, you know, Axiom. What are these? That's what I said in the start. You can Google this and it's another Rust framework that you guys can use. Similarly, Anthax or Wiz. So, like, these are, like, very new frameworks, I would say, relatively. But, again, the speed, sometimes they are performing better than even the frameworks that we are very well known of. And as you can see, it also provides the DB which is used multiple queries, cache queries, fortune, data updates, and plain text. Now this is pretty straightforward. So what I would do is drop the link in the description. You guys can just go here, check which one is more, uh, you know, near to your use case and which one you should be using. Now let's go 
and check the rule of thumb diagram that I want to share which will help you decide big time. So since we already reviewed the benchmarks and I showed you guys how complex at times benchmarks just relying on the numbers would be now because we have just heard you know some of the common names but there are other popping up as well so how do we decide which one to use so i have built this rule of thumb diagram based on my experience with rust working with different frameworks which are commonly available on the internet and you can literally fall to this diagram to choose any day so how do we choose a rust web framework now first of all the question is is performance critical for you if it is yes, do you prefer an actor-based model? Now, what is an actor-based model? So an actor-based model basically is a concurrency paradigm where independent actors possess asynchronous messages, encapsulate the states and communicate without shared memory. This enables us for, you know, scale and fault tolerant systems. So if that's what you want, as simple as that, go for Actix Web. It's the best. So basically performance critical and then you need a, a, a basically actor based model go for it actix web is the thing that you need or no you don't prefer actor based model maybe to avoid the complexity so you need a lightweight and flexible routing if yes go for axiom so yes axiom will give you performance and if you don't prefer an actor based model go for lightweight and flexible routing go for axiom and Otherwise, go for RAP, which is equally better and common around the internet as well. Similarly, let's go back. If performance is not critical for you, you need synchronous API or simple setup, like, you know, easy to just build maybe for a POC or maybe you want to, you know, quickly spin up a server. Maybe you are white coding as well. If yes, perform more modern async or simpler syntax. If you want a more uh, modern async or simpler syntax then yes go for rocket and otherwise go for pom and if you need synchronous api or simple setup no do you prefer a syntax like you know ruby rails like structure go for loco otherwise go for pom so basically this is a diagram that you guys can fo follow literally anytime because these are literally the most commonly used frameworks around the rust community and why did i select these because let's say you are stuck or you need something you can find literally the documentation the help around on the internet for any of these and they are you know giving you the best performance that any other frameworks can also give based on the numbers as well so i would always circle out as i showed you guys there are hundreds of frameworks to select from but you need to draw a line so that's where i draw a line personally actix web axiom wrap rocket palm loco and yeah so basically if you need performance just go to the left side if performance is not critical i'm not saying these frameworks are bad but performance is the main thing for you to in the decision making just blindly go on the left side of this tree if no go to the right side and as you can see uh then we have you know different other selections and we get end up getting our frameworks like 90% of the times if you are using Actix Web, Axiom, or Rocket or any of these or even 99% of the times you will get everything that you want. I haven't faced a single scenario where I need something which is not available in any of these frameworks. So I hope you guys uh, get the answer of it because I don't want it to perform those benchmarks which are available again on the internet. It's simply redundant and instead share with you guys something based on personal experience which is this rule of thumb diagram which you guys can always follow. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys understand, learn something new. You do like the video, share with your friends. I'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic. Until then.